CBS presents this program in color. I didn't want to bust in. Why not? You might not have been here. I've been home from work from that for half an hour. Hey, what's with you anyway? Have you come down with an acute case of propriety or something? Came to talk to you. Oh, well, that makes all the difference. You see, I thought you came to check the meter. You're not making it very easy for me. Oh, can you give me one reason why I should? You've got something to say that's so unpleasant you have to come in like a stranger. Is there any reason why I should make you comfortable in advance? I guess that's fair enough. Well, thank you. Do I guess or are you going to tell me? Frankly, I don't like you taking it out on Laura because you were mad at me. I told you I slapped her wrist. Well, it doesn't take a computer to figure out you've been hard on her. Not to mention the fact that it wasn't her fault that I was over there talking to her that night. Oh, I see. In other words, it was a plan of your very own. Look, I'm trying to be patient. And everything, everything you say is making it harder. You're trying to be patient? Boy, what do you think I've been doing while you and Laura have been having long talks about me? Well, when was the last one, anyway? I happened to run into her yesterday. In the supermarket? Did you both accidentally hail the same taxi? Or were you visiting a sick friend in the hospital? I happened to run into her at her house, if that's important. How cozy. And while this incredible coincidence was going on, did poor injured Laura happen to mention the fact that I came by yesterday to make up? The point is, you have no right to ball her out in the first place. You seem to be pretty fast with what rights I don't have, and I haven't heard lately about any I do have. If I have any at all. Good night. Where are you going? To the nearest saloon. by Vanquish, a pain reliever created to keep your headache from coming back. Review the bidding. I don't know what my husband was doing in Chicago. I don't know what connection he may have had with the missing girl, Terry, what's her name? And I'm not ready to concede that there was any connection. I'm interested in your choice of words. You say, not ready to concede. Does that mean you may change your mind? You policemen are devastating in your ability to twist people's words to your own advantage. We policemen sometimes attach more importance to attitudes than to words. And you find my attitude hostile. How unfortunate. I wish I could be more cordial. But you see, I have this eccentricity. I like my private life to remain private. It's not our intention to persecute you, Mrs. Porter. But we do intend to find out what happened to Terry Andrews. No matter how much inconvenience it may entail for anyone. Entail? You have an unusual vocabulary. 
I thought detectives reading was confined to paperback mysteries. I'm sure it's not of the least interest to you. But maybe we could understand each other better. If I were to tell you that I have a bachelor's degree in sociology and a master's in criminology. I'm impressed. But I'm the taxpayer and you're the public servant. Public servant, not yours. No, I doubt if I would employ you. Mrs. Porter, I enjoy playing ping pong as much as anyone else. But could we please get down to business? Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought we covered everything. Not quite. At the end of July in 1966, your husband made a substantial contribution to the university hospital. How would like, John? Specifically, it was a $10,000 donation to the Fertility Research Center. I see. Did you know about this transaction? Lieutenant, is it of the least importance whether I knew or not? Then you prefer not to answer the question? Well, I fail to see what it has to do with me. Well, it would help us if we could find the purpose of this donation. And it seemed possible that you might be able to answer it. Oh. I honestly can't. I assume it must have had something to do with tax deductions. Those things are really over my head. Oh, I was under the impression that you were quite well known in the field of sponsoring benefits and managing them. I should think that you'd be something of an expert. Oh, no. No, you see, my committees collect money. People's motives for giving are their own affair. You probably know that the head of the research center, fertility center, is Dr. Abbott. The same James Abbott who lived here as a medical student. How fascinating. You do know, of course, that your husband continued his friendship with Dr. Abbott. A lieutenant, I'm not very clear on these things, but isn't that what they call leading the witness? Yes, it is. It's a device often used for uh, dealing with uncooperative witnesses. Oh, but am I correct in assuming that such a question would be objected to in a courtroom? Quite correct. Your range of knowledge is considerable, Mrs. Porter. I'm sorry that you see fit to be so modest about what you know. <laughs> oh, Lieutenant, there are some moments when I almost like you. <laughs> oh, Jock, darling, why don't you fix a drink for the Lieutenant? Uh, thanks, just the same, but I'm on duty. On duty? Surely not. I thought this was just informal. Oh, sure you wouldn't take advantage of one of Mother's rare spurts of generosity, Lieutenant? Quite sure. Thank you. Jock, darling, do we know anything about one of your father's donations to the University Fertility Center last year? I'm sure we don't. That's what I thought. You see, Lieutenant? In that case, I'll be going. Thank you very much. Please give Iris my best. Iris? Oh, please, Lieutenant, I realize the poker face is a necessary weapon in your profession. But Iris is your sister. The clever girl is handling our publicity for the new season at the museum. I'll give her your message. Well, thank you. I'll show you out. That won't be necessary. Thank you. Good night, Mr. Porter. Good night, Lieutenant. Well, you can fix me a drink. Naturally, darling. I think I'll take the one he refused. That makes two for me. Well, did I do what you wanted me to do? Absolutely. Don't ever volunteer information. I told you they'd find out about that donation of fathers on their own. Yes, you did, dear. 
Yes, but right at pressure again. What else do they know? Well, nothing for me. I followed your advice to the letter. I could so easily have told them my suspicions. Well, Mother, suspicions don't make a case. You want to see Dr. Abbott nailed to the wall. Don't blow it by warning him. Jock, darling, I wish you wouldn't use such vulgar language. Well, maybe if I had a master's degree in something, I'd have a richer vocabulary. Oh, you heard all that. I didn't know you were listening. Mother, I'm always listening. I should have guessed that. But if they know about the check, I wonder what else they know. And one thing you can always be sure about with the police. They know either less than they're telling or twice as much. Darling, you always brighten things so. Sorry, dear, those are the facts of life. What do we do now? We turn things back over to me for a while. And? And I see what I can find out from my cool blonde, Martha Hurry. Well, so far, you'll forgive me if I'm not impressed with the results you've gotten from the lieutenant's sister. Well, I forgive you, dear. But the night is young. And so am I. You're not going to call her now. Why not? Well, her brother was just here. Darling, what do I have to feel guilty about? The first half of Love is a Many Splendored Thing has been brought to you by Vanquish, the pain reliever created to keep your headache from coming back. The second half is brought to you by Libby's Canned and Frozen Foods. Something good is always cooking at Libby's. No, Jock, not tonight. Thanks anyway. But do you realize what day this is? What's the first of December? Well, you want me to see to, to have to spend a new month in all by myself? No use, Jock. Besides, I'd just be a freak out tonight. Tomorrow. I'll let you know. Ciao. Ciao. Got a warrant? Why are you sitting alone in the dark? Oh, it's a new habit I've gotten into lately. Thinking. You want a drink? I could stand one. But you couldn't. What's lecture number two? I haven't finished lecture number one. Why are you drinking like this? I'm afraid, Tom. Of what, honey? Maybe I can help. I'm afraid of losing Mark. Well, that won't help keep him. Besides, I always thought that with you and Mark, it was just kicks. Well, that was the way Mark wanted it when he got back from Vietnam. I went along. And then all of a sudden one day I got serious. But he never knew. 
Only it isn't easy keeping it locked up inside you. I didn't know. That's the danger with these arrangements, sis. And then, like a fool, I went and I told him I loved him. What did he say? He said I was his only girl. Boy, I'd even buy that for the moment. And I'd wake up the next morning and I'd ache all over. I'm sorry. Don't do that, Iris. It's the last one. When was the first one? You're beginning to slur. Well, I'll watch that. She sells seashells by the seashore. Now you try that, Officer Sir Bright. Well, Tom, what am I going to do? I don't know. Is there someone else? I think so. Hold on to your ID badge. Laura. Iris, right, you're out of your mind. Well, wait and see before you send me to a shrink. I even knew before Mark did. I'm not going to take that seriously. When you were kids, you always used to accuse Laura of taking your toys away from you. Well, now she's taken my prize toy. That's nonsense. You ready for lecture number two? Why not? I have a feeling I'm going to get it anyway tonight. Jock Porter sent his regards to you. I don't like the way he said your name. I've been seeing him. I turned down a date with him tonight. Stay away from him, Iris. Is that an order, Lieutenant Donnelly? I can take care of myself. Not with his kind, you can't. Especially on a rebound from Mark. Jock's just for fun. Yeah, maybe for a while, but watch out. He's a fast worker. When he gets bored, he gets bad. His mother's money can't cover up his reputation. I can't just sit around here every night. Where are you going now? I'll go find Mark. When he left here, he can get past the first bar. Hey, what about that pride and independence of yours? I told you. I love him. in that place are revolting. Don't they ever take a bath or shave? You're not my keeper. I'm sick of you following me around. Well, how did you happen to come with me? Because you were about to start a fight. I think I might have embarrassed you in front of all those bones. Oh, shut up, Iris. Hey, slow down! Childish trick. Why don't you grow up? Why don't you? How much have you had to drink? Your breath doesn't exactly smell of ginger ales on the rocks. How much have you had? A couple. Yeah, a couple of triples. Oh, funny. Glory baby could see you now. I hate silence. She'd be shocked, wouldn't she? I told you before, keep Laura out of this. And what if I don't? 
What are you trying to do, kill us both? Hey, that's an idea, isn't it? Then we'd be lost. Really lost. Somehow the idea doesn't appeal to me. And there's more to life than getting lost. Oh, really? Don't give it to me straight, man. Oh, come on with the hippie stuff. You're lousy with it. You're not making the scene. You're laughable. Well, who's making the scene with you now, Mark? Who? Well, if you keep your voice down and keep your hands on that wheel. You didn't answer me. Jock Porter thinks I'm a crazy chick. We have a bash every time. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Creep's got some rotten habits. Yeah, you told me. You told me, you told me. Tom told me. Dad's probably waiting at home to tell me. Pretty soon there's going to be a whole line form. Standing room only. Everybody's screaming at Iris. Jock Porter, go home. Stop this car. You're getting drunk. Why don't you open the door and jump out? Look out! I see it, I see it. I'm sick of this. Well, I'm sick of you. Sick is right. What does that mean? You heard me sick. An emotional mess. Neurotic and hysterical. Look who's talking! You were the one who wanted to get lost. Oh, and you didn't, huh? I didn't. I only did it for you. Oh, brother, what a liar. Oh, so now I'm a liar and I'm sick too, huh? Iris, look out! <laughs> is a many splendored thing has been brought to you by Libby's canned and frozen foods. Something good is always cooking at Libby's. Fashions from Sir for Her. Join us again on Monday for Love is a Many Splendored Thing.